Welcome to another edition of Book Spectrum. I'm Chris Cordani, your host. On Book Spectrum, we like to bring you books from new writers, seasoned authors, and those from other professions all across the spectrum. With me is a man who has been on this show twice before, Dr. Kevin Shuey. He recently released his third book in the Bad Love series, Bad Love Beyond. This one sees the Bad Love gang travel into the farther reaches of space after saving the world from timeline disaster in the second book, Bad Love Tigers. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Kevin Shuey. Hey, Chris. It's great to be back with you. You know, um, I was reminiscing that uh, you and I uh, interviewed about Bad Love Strikes, and it was your very first uh, interview on Book Spectrum. And here we are, 15 months later, with book number three. 15 months, book number three. That, by many authors' standards, is a short period of time, but the lockdowns gave us a lot of time to kind of sit back and, and do these things, right? Yeah, no kidding. I mean, I, I really, um, I call it my COVID-19 experience, you know, because I, my day job, I work as a cancer specialist here in Golden, Colorado. And, um, you know, I really, uh, I can't afford to get the COVID-19. So I've been very careful. I work during the day. We usually, we finish a little earlier now than we did before. So I usually get out of here between four and five at night. And I go home and I write, and um, I write, I write it during the night and on the weekends. And um, lo and behold, uh, this whole thing has really helped me to um, literally uh, get my uh, career as a book author off and running. Isn't that a good thing? More time, more books, and more entertainment. You're going to shoot up there to do quite a lot more with the Bad Love Gang. We're going to talk about that too. But let's focus on this book. Bad Love Beyond is the third book in your best-selling Bad Love series and written over the past two years, as we talked about. We did mention you were the first guest on Book Spectrum, but you've kept a busy and fulfilling career as a radiation oncologist. That's right. In year number 34, if you can believe it. So uh, I've been uh, taking care of cancer patients now for 34 years, Chris. Between all of that, and I know you closed early, Still, that's a lot of work and a lot of uh, uh, people to work with. And the writing. How did you find time to do the research for all these books? Because you did this all yourself, and you had to be as scientifically accurate as possible. Yeah, well, you know, doing research is really part of my daily life as a cancer doctor because um, literally, you know, what we do in the clinic for our cancer patients, the data just turns over. Year, It used to be like, every, you know, three to five years. But, I mean, the data is turning over year over year, and there's so many new treatments coming out that research is just part of what I do every day. And um, doing research for books uh, when I'm writing at night or on the weekends just comes natural. And uh, But I you know, it, it it does. It takes a lot of research. And so maybe it's because of my training as a doctor that I just was prepared uh, to do the research for the books. What kind of research went into making this book both historically accurate and scientifically believable, especially when it comes to space travel? That's always tough, asked the guys who made Star Wars. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, if you think about this, I'm a radiation oncologist as a cancer specialist, and so uh, everything that I do in the world of radiation oncology is based on physics principles. And so uh, I'm a big fan of physics. I loved physics in school. And um, doing the research about uh, time and space travel is actually really fun for me because um, I point out in Bad Love Beyond that, you know, I don't think we're going to get uh, to a planet 11.5 billion light years away by getting in a starship and slamming the pedal to the metal, you know, because uh, let's just say that you're going uh, 10 or 100 times the speed of light, it's still going to take you uh, a million years to get 11.5 billion light years away. And, 
you know, last time I looked, uh, you know, we're pretty lucky if we make it into our 90s, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know, the way to get from point A to point B is through a wormhole. And wormhole technology is supported by Einstein's theory of relativity. It's just that to make that happen, to hold that uh, time or space passage open for somebody to go through, you have to have something called exotic matter. And um, interestingly, uh, I, that was the first chapter of my first book, was the discovery of exotic matter, because I knew from a physics perspective where I wanted to take this book series that we had to have exotic matter. And so um, I'm sure you've noticed that it plays a key role, not only in the book series, but especially in this new book, Bad Love Beyond. I'm speaking with Dr. Kevin Shuey. He's the author of the Bad Love series. The newest book, Bad Love Beyond, is out. You're listening to Book Spectrum. President Gerald Ford plays a big part in this book. His tenure was short as president of the United States and was marred by one incident, as you remember, the trip. People did not realize that the guy, he had to deal with national turmoil, a cold war, a tough economic situation, and public furor through guilt by association. Tell us more about the research you did to learn about his character in the book. You know, Gerald Ford was the so-called accidental president. I mean, he, he never was elected to vice president or to be the president. And, um, and so he, he had a very interesting history. I mean, he's elected um, uh, in his district in Congress uh, for 25 years or so. I mean, he, he uh, was very popular in his district. Um, but but Gerald Ford was a, he was a lawyer and um, and he he joined the Navy as a lawyer in world, when World War II broke out and had a very interesting uh, career in the Navy and was uh, on an aircraft carrier in, in the Pacific and uh, during one of the storms uh, he literally uh, lost his footing on the deck of the ship the ship listed listed like 25 degrees. And uh, Ford was sliding off the ship into the raging sea below. There was a uh, basically a, a, a two-inch rail around the deck that literally saved him. And he was at, he was athletic, and he was able to grab that and then swing onto the deck below. But I mean, he came literally, Chris. He just came within inches of losing his life in World War II. And um, I found it very interesting to do the research about about his life. And with the time frame of 1975 for um, Bad Love Beyond, the Bad Love Gang needed to know Gerald Ford because they were uh, – they're, they're really um, – uh, their arch enemy now is Boryal Krovel Pluskov, you know, the Russian KG super agent that they're, um, you know, fighting with. And so they needed Gerald Ford to, um, uh, to go after Boria. And uh, that's why we brought him into the book. And uh, it's really been a lot of fun getting to know Gerald Ford uh, despite his short tenure as president. He did a really good job in real life uh, dealing with the Soviets, as a matter of fact. And as you pointed out, quite the athlete, this is the perfect guy to work with your bad love gang. Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the things I found about, you know, Chris, when I was researching uh, Ford is, you know, Ford was really a likable guy. I mean, you know, uh, People from both sides of the aisle uh, liked Gerald Ford, and um, he he had a sense of humor. I mean, in the in the first uh, chapter of Bad Love Beyond, I quote um, I quote Gerald Ford. It's a hilarious quote. He says, "If Lincoln were alive today, he'd be turning over in his grave." <laughs> 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 And that's um, and that's how he was, you know. He just had he had a real um, 
you know, uh, cute and and uh, quirky sense of humor, and people people liked uh, Ford. You also have some uh, characters that we all know about too, uh, Don Rumsfeld and uh, other members of uh, the historic Ford administration. You really worked all these guys in there with the Bad Love Gang, and and that's what makes for uh, a great historical fiction. Yeah, I love that, and that that's you know I get. Uh, I get notes from people uh, that are reading the books, and um, I think that, Chris, that's what's really making my book series popular, is that um, I weave history very carefully into the exploits of the Bad Love Gang, and, you know, um, the the book series starts in 1974, and basically in Bad Love Beyond, we're now at the end of 1975. And um, that's their starting point, you know, before they travel back in time or travel into space. And um, and so it's been a lot of fun doing doing the research uh, into the, that that time era. And uh, I mean, that's when I was in high school and um, I've had so much fun with that. And then, you know, of course, uh, the books have these uh, soundtracks that go right along with the story, and it's all that music from the 60s and early 70s. So um, I think the historical accuracy of the series has been one of the true uh, strong points in terms of the the people who are fans of, of this uh, book series. Dr. Kevin Shuey is with me on Book Spectrum. We're talking about his new book from the Bad Love series, Bad Love Beyond. It delves even deeper into the realm of science and science fiction. We mentioned the space travel aspect of the new book, Kevin. Last time you were on, we discussed some of your time travel influences. What about the space-based sci-fi? What books or sci-fi media gave you some inspiration for some of the events in this book? Yeah, well, I mean, I was always a fan of Star Trek, uh, you know, growing up in the 60s. And, of course, Star Trek went through many iterations. And then, you know, the uh, the whole Star Wars um, series, I mean, all of that is so intriguing to me because, um, you know, um, we... It's it's impossible to believe that we're alone in the universe, Chris. I mean, uh, and I really dive into this in Bad Love Beyond. I talk about uh, the probability of, of uh, other uh, intelligent life just in the Milky Way galaxy, which, you know, could be estimated from anywhere from you know, two planets to more than a thousand planets, but then you have all these other millions of galaxies in the universe. And so um, I'm just personally intrigued by all of this. And and uh, people are going to enjoy Bad Love Beyond because I tackle the magnitude of the universe and the probability of intelligent life out there and it really will make the readers uh, think um, about the the actual probabilities, and um, and so there's an education in this book, Bad Love Beyond, about the probabilities of uh, intelligent life in the universe other than just here on Earth. The Bad Love Gang managed to visit a planet inhabited by dinosaurs. That's an interesting twist, especially when many sci-fi books and movies have preferred the, to have their main characters encounter some sort of advanced species. Interestingly, it's the Earthlings who were ahead technologically in this instance. I just found that an, a neat twist. Yeah, so um, here's the deal. You know, uh, well, let me ask you a question, Chris. I mean, do you believe in dinosaurs? They existed, obviously, so yeah. <laughs> you caught me off guard on that one. <laughs> yeah, well, we have, we have all the fossils. We have, we have the proof that the dinosaurs were here. And so what happened was, here on Earth, we went through an extinction event. I mean, Earth uh, was struck by a, a comet or a large meteor, and we had a you know, basically it was kind of like a nuclear winter. 
But at any rate, um, the dinosaurs were extinct because of this extinction event that we had here on Earth, and they were part of our evolution. And so anyway, um, you know, the, the Bad Love Gang in, in Bad Love Beyond, they're traveling to this distant planet Azor, which is 11.5 billion light years away, and the sister planet to Earth because uh, we have blue exotic matter here and they have blue exotic matter there and that's what's connecting these these two planets so when they get to azor um it is a technologically advanced society but their planet has not yet had an extinction event like earth and so the dinosaurs have evolved and they're still living on planet azor and they, uh, the Azorians, of course, have found a, a way to coexist with the dinosaurs. Um, and it makes for a very interesting uh, adventure because here you have this super sophisticated technology. I mean, you know, they have the, the, uh, the, the, the cars that they use are called Azurian flashbacks, and they use exotic matter to levitate and move about. And so these cars are flying, they're flying cars, and they have the ability to be submarines or go underwater as well. And the motorcycles are flying motorcycles, and they're called Skylectives. So, you know, I want, I want to have an Azurian flashback for my next car. But so you have these, and he, also the Azurians, they wear these uh, body suits that are, uh, mainframe computers. I mean, they're basically um, they're computing marvels and they're they're artificial intelligence and their artificial intelligence instead of being Alexa is Luna, and so they're talking to Luna and they're and, and they're interacting with dinosaurs and it just <laughs> <laughs> it makes for so much fun. <laughs> There could not be a true Bad Love series book without the Kevin Shuey soundtrack. You alluded to it before, but let's talk about some of the music for this one. You got some Carol King in there. That was fun. And Helen Reddy's I Am Woman. Not exactly sci-fi-ish, but uh, neat additions. The women's equality uh, movement really um, dates back um, quite a ways, but you have to have Helen Reddy in there. Uh, and so Crisco is finding a way to get onto the um, the crashed alien ship in Area 51 so that they can uh, make the jump for space travel to planet Azor. And, uh, and you know, and Crisco basically saying, you know, uh, that, you know, I am woman and I can do this because they're, they're kind of at a loss at how they're going get, to get into the ship, but she finds a way. And, uh, you know, so she's up in the entrance to the ship and she's looking down at the guys and she's like, you know, she's like saying, any of you guys want to take a, a trip to another planet tonight? <laughs> and, and uh, you know, the song, uh, Helen Reddy's song, I'm Woman, is playing uh, in Bubble Butt's mind as, as he's experiencing all this. And uh, it was, it you know... At that point in time, in the 70s, I mean, she was it. And, um, it, it, and, and it's just a perfect fit. Kevin, also in the Bad Love Beyond soundtrack, and I consider him the most talented Beatle, Ringo Starr. You have it, Don't Come Easy, his solo project, and of course, the best Beatles song, Yellow Submarine. Yeah, so they're taking a, uh, they're taking an Azurian flashback to go to the Republic of Azor to try to save the Republic of Azor from a volcanic extinction event. And, um, and uh, Bubble Butt is, is basically kind of thinking through this uh, impossible mission that they're being sent on. And, of course, the song, It Don't Come Easy, pops into his head. And I mean, you're you're right, Chris. I mean, what what a great song by Ringo Starr. I mean, it's just uh, it's it's classic. And then when the uh, the Azurian flashback has to avoid a, a storm and they dive into the water, um, 
I think it's Crisco. She does. She uh, asked uh, Bubble Butt to play Yellow Submarine, and you know the whole gang, of course. Who who didn't sing Yellow Submarine? Who was part of that era? I mean, you know, when that song would come on, everybody would just start singing. And so, uh, anyway, it just uh, uh, I. M- Really, personally, the the soundtrack for Bad Love Beyond is my favorite of the first three books. And yes, there is another Beatles song, too, so plenty of Beatles representation, Kevin Shuey. One question, though. The Beatles are long considered one of the greatest bands ever. In fact, Frank Zappa, the great Frank Zappa, said there was only one band better than the Beatles, the Shags. And they're unfortunately missing from your soundtrack, but maybe we can work that out in the future. I'll have to work on that, Chris. Well, Frank Zappa is always right about things, but you can't leave out the Beatles in any in any way. Well, um, you know when they are uh, when the group is uh, on this uh, helium airship on planet Azor, uh, and they're with the Prime Minister Dan Vinio One. Um, they're down in this observation uh, room, and there's just the whole thing is uh, is made with uh, with clear plexiglass like windows and it has a it has a, a sofa around the edges and and bubble butt uh and the group come down and they um they do a little uh lip sync uh of a stairway to heaven for Dan Vinio one and so you know what song are you going to play at the end of the world and uh I, I, uh, you know, my music brain went to Led Zeppelin and Stairway to Heaven. I mean, what, what a perfect song when you think the world is ending, right? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Shuey with me on Book Spectrum. The book, Bad Love Beyond the Third in his Bad Love Gang series. The Bad Love Gang, we talked about the nicknames. You, of course, are Bubble Butt. That's the one. They're, they're based on you and your friends. You got some great nicknames like, uh, like Spaghetti Head. Bucky, Crisco, Crisco is a good one. The Pud, not Guggenheim, uh, Goondoggy. There we go. You gotta, you gotta feel bad for uh, Billy Blanchard. His his nickname was Willie. I, you gotta could have come up with a better one for him instead of just Willie, right? Just Willie, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the nicknames are. I mean, nine of the gang are really based on on real people. In fact. Um, you know, I've been in uh, recent contact with Crazy Ike and Crisco, and uh, they just love the book series. And, you know, it's like they just can't wait for the next one to come out. And um, I keep telling them that, you know, as soon as I can get this book series made into a movie, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the surviving members of the Bad Luck Gang together in the credits of the movie, and we're all going to be playing our air guitar and lip-syncing to some of this music together at the end of the movie. Well, that would be fun, yeah. So I suppose your uh, your friends think pretty highly or think pretty well of their fictional counterparts. Yeah, I think everybody's really having a lot of fun with it because, um, I mean, we, we all have our own uh, special set of skills, and, um, and so everyone is lending something to the success of the exploits of the Bad Love Gang, and... And um, there's a lot of truth to um, to each of these uh, people. And I think that that's the other thing that's making the series popular, Chris, is that if you, if you really look through the list of characters, which I now in the front of the book, I detail uh, each of the characters, you can probably find somebody that reminds you a little bit of you. And I, I think that makes the book more real. That's an important thing about a successful book or a book series, being able to identify with some of the characters. If you want to keep people reading books down the road, they'll be like, hey, I know this guy or I know somebody like this guy. This is a lot of fun. That's great. I want to get into something else, though, because there's a theme of hope for each of these books. These young kids or the young young adults, uh, teens, can pretty much do a lot for their life experience and for what they're doing and where they're from. A lot of hope in these books. But you... 
as we said before, a radiation oncologist. You've seen a lot, and, and it must be difficult to do your line of work. Uh, luckily, of course, or at least the good thing is there are a lot of um, uh, new cures and new new research that uh, that brings some hope in there. But how do you keep a nice, lighthearted feeling of hope and adventure, balancing that with the hard, emotional work of, of your own job with that writing career? Well, I'm, I actually love this question because it, it gets to the core of what I'm doing with this book series. So, you know, as you know, we've gone through a rough year here on planet Earth with COVID-19, and um, it's affected the globe. It's, it's everywhere, kind of like World War II, you know, was everywhere. It affected everybody. And so in my life as a cancer doctor, I do, I have to, I'm, I have over 2,000 patients in active follow-up, and every day I have to walk in a room and tell somebody that their cancer has spread to the lung or spread to the brain or the bones, or and, and that's terrible news to have to share with somebody about their life. And um, what I've discovered in my practice uh, as a cancer specialist is that's not where it stops, Chris. It doesn't stop when you give somebody bad news. That's the starting point. And so you take that bad news and you say, but here's what we're going to do about it. Th this is your reality, but this is what this is the next step. This is what what this is how we're going to take care of it and deal with it. And I think that, you know, Reading my books during this time of where we're really it's a, a trial uh, here on Earth, these these are feel good books because the group is they're they're encountering all of these issues. But here's here's what sets the book series apart: they look at these issues and then they decide, well, here's how here's how we're going to manage it, and this is what we're going to do to take care of it. And so the books are filled with hope, and um, and like typical teenagers, of course, they um, they can be dealing with very serious things, but they do uh, manage to find some humor among themselves, even in the most serious times. And so that's the hope. Hope is always not so much what is your situation at this moment. Hope is what are you going to do with this situation to make it better? And there's, there's always, always something that you can do to make it better. And it doesn't always have to involve time travel and space travel, <laughs> visiting other planets, hitting their Bermuda Triangle and things like that. But that's the fun part of it. Yeah, that's right. Reading Bad Love Beyond, Kevin, you again leave the ending open to more things happening. Does this mean we may be seeing more from the Bad Love Gang in the future? Well, that's right. So in in Bad Love Beyond, um, their their objective is to get the cure for breast cancer for one of their members, uh, Hannah Lieb. And, um, and so... They do accomplish their objective and get their hands on this uh, antidote or medication for Hannah um, by the end of the book, Bad Love Beyond. But now they have the medicine, but they have to get the medicine to the patient. And so book number four is entitled Bad Love Medicine. And it will be the story of how the Bad Love Gang get this medicine that they now have in their hands to Hannah. And uh, the, I know that the fans of the book series are very interested in, um, in seeing them rescue Hannah from her fate of breast cancer. And so um, Bad Love Medicine is underway. I'm, I'm writing away, and we are penciled for a uh, – penciled in – for a Memorial Day release. So all of your um, listeners out there, they you can binge read now on the Bad Love book series. And even if you read all three books, you'll still be, um, you'll be anxious to see what happens in book four. And it's coming Memorial Day 2021. We'll be on the lookout for that and hopefully having you on Book Spectrum as well. Be glad I'll be excited to be back with you again, Chris. You know, 
you and I could be doing this for a lot of years to come. Well, let's hope so. Maybe you can travel to other universes throughout the multiverse. That would be fun, too. Absolutely. <laughs> Dr. Kevin Shuey, thank you again for being with us here on Book Spectrum. Thank you, Chris. I've, I've so enjoyed it, and it's, it's really now kind of a tradition with you and I because I got to start with you on your first broadcast with Book Spectrum with Bad Love Strikes, and here we are with Bad Love Beyond and, and Bad Love Medicine coming uh, this, this spring sometime, so the fun will continue. And fun it will be. And if you're listening and want a copy of the book, Bad Love Beyond, you can get that from a link on our website, bookspectrum.com. You can also find it on Amazon and other digital outlets. Chris Scordani here. This is Book Spectrum. Thank you again for listening to us. And until next time, enjoy reading. <laughs>